Toyota's Ducato might not be the first name on your LCV shortlist for a large van, but the latest, much improved Series 8 model definitely merits your attention, with enhanced multi-jet 3 diesel power and a full EV option too. Spun off the same platform as the Peugeot Boxer, the Vauxhall Movano and the Citroen Relay, the Ducato continues to score in four key areas. Robustness, low running costs, a wide range of body options and load area flexibility. And now offers a fifth attribute, increased cabin sophistication with impressive media connectivity. The Fiat Ducato, it's the company's largest van, the flagship of its commercial vehicle range since 1981, and according to the Italian brand, the most important model in its LCB lineup. Well, that's certainly the case in mainland Europe, where it's the best selling commercial vehicle of any kind, regardless of category. Number one in terms of sales in 12 different countries. Here though, it's a less familiar sight than it really should be on our roads. Uh, that's something that Fiat set out to change when it launched this much improved X290 series, sixth generation version in 2014, a design enhanced first in 2020, and then again in 2022 to create this much improved series eight model that we're gonna look at here. The fundamentals here are pretty familiar because they're shared with three other competing models in the large van segment, the Peugeot Boxer, the Citroen Relay, and latterly the Vauxhall Movano. Now, Fiat uses its own power plants though, and as part of the Series 8 update, uh, they gave the Ducato a bit more visual and technological sophistication to set this LCV apart, not only from its design cousins, but also from other key segment rivals. The core reasons that you might want one though lie as before with the wide range of body styles and the affordable running costs. Those are aided here by the introduction of a fresh multi-jet three diesel powertrain and the option of a new nine speed automatic transmission. Uh, there is also a full electric version too. Time to take a look then at the Ducato range in more detail with the usual comprehensive car and driving road test. Fiat has established itself as a center of excellence for diesel engine technology and the latest Euro 60 multi-jet three engines that are found under the bonnets of this improved Ducato reinforce that reputation. Uh, as usual in a van, diesel is the only combustion option. Uh, the whole range is based around the same 2.3 liter multi-jet engine, improved for efficiency, refinement and durability, uh, developing either 120, 140 horsepower, as in this case, 160 or 180 horsepower. And usually supplied with the six-speed manual gearbox that we're trying here. Providing you avoid the entry-level unit optional with this revised Series 8 model is a new 189 uh, ZF nine-speed automatic gearbox with three driving modes, uh, normal, eco and power. Uh, that torque converter gearbox is far better than the previous rather jerky robotized auto. The only powertrain that this Fiat shares with its Peugeot, Citroen and Vauxhall Stellantis Group uh, LCV design counterparts is that used in the full electric e-Ducato, which is offered in two battery sizes, 47 kilowatt hour, uh, which has a 120 mile range, or 79 kilowatt hour, which has a 192 mile range. Uh, the 47 kilowatt hour model gets to 30 miles an hour in under six seconds and has a top speed of 62 MPH. On the move, we've been impressed with the supple ride and the relatively easy maneuverability of this uh, Series 8 model. Uh, vans this big are rarely this easy to drive. A key change with this revised model is the redesigned electric power steering system. Uh, it's claimed to be more precise and manageable in all driving and load conditions. Uh, it has a smaller steering wheel uh, with a reduced turning circle too. Mechanically, the Ducato retains its front wheel drive configuration with a McPherson front suspension and a rigid axle rear suspension with leaf springs. Uh, the front suspension top mounts, uh, they've been reinforced to reduce noise uh, with a number of rear suspension configurations on offer and they depend on vehicle use. Uh, single leaf springs with or without anti-roll bars, uh, they underpin the standard van and the passenger versions 
double leaf springs again with or without anti-roll bars they cater to large capacity vans and to heavy conversions a heavy duty rear suspension with double leaf springs and anti-roll bars is available for very heavy conversions up to a maximum of 2500 kilos for highway use and heavy traffic, a class leading degree of autonomous driving is now possible with this Fiat if you specify it with adaptive cruise control, lane centering, lane control and traffic jam assist. The Ducato remains recognisable but a bit more contemporary looking in this improved form. The front now has a bolder look featuring a smarter Fiat badge at its centre that's flanked by uh, restyled three-section headlamp units which can now feature full LED beams. The engine housing and the skid plates have been redesigned too. You may also want these optional front fog lamps. As we told you elsewhere in this film, the Ducato panel van can be had with three heights and in five different body lengths. And inside, well, this sixth generation Ducato design may be getting on for a decade old, but it'll feel pretty current if you've got a spec like this one, including the two new optional screens that Fiat's added into the cab of this Series 8 model. Even the standard instrument clustered with analog dials separated by a 3.5 inch screen has been redesigned. Here though, we've got the alternative extra cost full digital cluster binnacle display, which has a seven inch TFT central color display flanked by two side digital gauges, RPM on the left and fuel on the right. It's not particularly customizable, but it can show 3D navigation and driver assistance system info. In the centre of the dash sits another optional screen if you don't stick with the standard 7-inch monitor. Uh, this one is Fiat's latest 10-inch Uconnect screen with its Android operating system and smartphone-like interface. A navigation by TomTom Tom 3D Maps is available through wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and as well as a DAB audio tuner, uh, Bluetooth and climate system management, there is intuitive Hey Fiat voice recognition. A third screen can optionally be built into the rear view mirror as here showing a rearward camera feed from above the back door and a real boon if you don't want to depend on the huge door mirrors to see behind you. Features like these plus the redesigned three spoke steering wheel and this smarter slimmer central climate control panel uh, distract your attention from the fact that this is a cabin which is now rather showing its age. Uh, something evidenced by the lack of a cargo flap into the load area and the retention of the rather awkward manual handbrake between the driver's seat and the door although Fiat does now offer an electric parking brake to replace it. At least this Italian LCV is well connected with a 230 volt socket and a USB-A port uh, low down in the center and a 12 volt point plus USB-A and USB-C ports further up to the left. Uh, the seats are better with this revised Decato with a more contemporary look, smarter padding and offering more space and comfort. You can't fault the cabin for stowage options either. Uh, there are two glove boxes with an open recess between them Plus, there are three storage levels and a bottle holder in each of the restyled door cards. And you get lots of space beneath the two-person passenger bench. Uh, plus, there's also a cubby under the climate controls with a cup holder to the left of it. More cup holders feature near the new wireless phone charger mat in this tray at the base of the centre stack, with additional ones in the panel that folds out from the central seat for writing reports on the move. Outer bulkhead coat hooks uh, feature two, and a sizable 22 litre overhead storage compartment can be added in the roof. It costs quite a lot more these days to choose a really large panel van. Take the list figures for this improved Ducato, which generally reflect the prevailing industry trend. At the time of this test in autumn 2022, Fiat Professionals XVAT figures for diesel models ranged in the 40 to 50,000 pound bracket, spread across three vehicle heights and five lengths. Uh, the Ducato can also be had in people mover minibus or chassis cab forms. You can order basic cab or cowls formats. Uh, you can specify a dropside truck or go for a one-way tipper.
If you want this panel van variant, but you also need it to carry people, there are window van and crew van versions, or you can use this Fiat as a conversion base, as 10 out of 12 UK NHS trusts do to create ambulances, or to create a motorhome. Uh, three in every four European motorhomes sold are based on Ducatos. In all, over 10,000 Ducato variants are apparently possible. And key rivals in the segment for properly large LCVs, well, apart from this model's shared design cousins, the Peugeot Boxer, Citroen Relay, and the Vauxhall Movano. There's the full-sized two-ton Ford Transit, uh, the Mercedes Sprinter, the Iveco Daily, uh, the Maxus Deliver 9, and two more shared designs, one being the Volkswagen Crafter and MAN TGE, and the other being the Renault Master and the Nissan Interstar. If it's a Fiat Ducato panel van you want, then you'll be choosing between trim packages, uh, Technico, Technico Plus, and Business Edition. Now, base Technico gives you quite a lot, actually. A 7-inch Uconnect central screen, manual climate control, a keyless entry, a wireless phone charger, and a rear view camera. Technico Plus adds automatic climate control, and Business Edition, well, that gives you the full digital instrument cluster, the larger 10-inch Uconnect central screen, and power folding mirrors. Obviously, the all-electric e-Ducato costs a lot more. Uh, the amount varies between uh, the three choices that customers will have in terms of height and length and wheelbase. Uh, plus, with that model, there are two trim levels, STD and e-Technico. At the time of this test in autumn 2022, XVAT e-Ducato pricing after deduction of the government's £5,000 plug-in grant started from around £52,000 for the 47 kilowatt hour model or from around £64,000 for the 79 kilowatt hour version. Across the Ducato range, your Fiat professional dealer will encourage you to look at three functional extra cost packs. There's a professional pack, now that will give you a wireless charger, keyless entry, an LED interior light, 270 degree opening rear doors and a tablet holder. Uh, alternatively, there's a style pack and that gives you a smarter front look with full LED headlamps. They also feature in the night vision pack, which additionally adds fog lights and the digital rear view mirror that we've been trying here. You might additionally want to add the autonomous driving ADAS features that we told you about in our driving section earlier. Uh, further cutting edge ADAS features include intelligent speed assist, uh, attention assist, full brake control with uh, pedestrian detection, crosswind assist, a post-collision braking system, and also trailer stability control. Plus, you can specify all-round parking sensors and an active park assist system to steer you into spaces. A fresh set of connected services can transform the way that you might be able to use this Ducato. Uh, Uconnect services and the Fiat app will make it possible to manage and monitor this vehicle directly from various devices. Uh, further services include remote assistance, uh, smart navigation, remote control and fleet management. Uh, every month a report can also be sent on the health of your Ducato uh, with some recommendations on how best to take care of the vehicle. As we told you elsewhere in this film, the Ducato panel van can be had with three heights and in five different body lengths. These full height twin rear doors open conventionally, but uh, we would want to specify instead the optional 270 degree feature, which allows you to fold them back along the vehicle sides. Now, depending on variant, uh, cargo capacity varies between eight and 17 cubic meters. This 35 LH2 variant offers 13 cubic meters of volume, a load length of 3,705 mils, and a load width of 1,870 mils. Gross vehicle weights range between 3,340 and 4,170 kilos. Choose the e-Ducato and you'll find no practicality compromises with the underfloor battery installation. There's the usual sliding side door with the option of another on the other side. 
And if you use this to swallow really heavy loads, then you'll want to choose the right payload variant. There are Ducato payload options of up to 2.1 tonnes. This 35 LH2 variant can take up to 1,472 kilos. As usual, we recommend that you add the ply lining kit for the load area sides that we have fitted here. Uh, the bulkhead is tough, but it offers no load through flap into the uh, cab for longer items. Class competitive efficiency figures are promised with panel van CO2 emissions as low as 204 grams per kilometre and a combined cycle fuel economy figure of up to 36.2 miles per gallon. Obviously those figures will vary with body size and engine output but you can improve them by adding in an extra cost eco pack. Uh, the diesel unit has 30,000 mile service intervals to help lower service bills and reduce time the vehicle spends off the road for maintenance. As for the alternative full electric e-Ducato, well, we gave you that version's range figures in our driving section. Uh, the base 47 kilowatt hour derivative takes two hours, 25 minutes to charge via AC or DC chargers. Uh, the bigger battery 79 kilowatt hour e-Ducato, well, that takes four hours to charge. Pounding the streets of Naples or Palermo is about as tough an assignment as you could think to put a commercial vehicle through, but it's here that the Fiat Ducato has earned a loyal following. If it can put up with that sort of traffic, heat cycling and punishment from potholes, cobbles and other road users, then British conditions aren't going to make it break a sweat. This improved Series 8 model builds on the toughness of its predecessor and adds a welcome layer of technical sophistication in both combustion and full electric forms. A wider range of derivatives gives this vehicle one advantage over its Citroen, Peugeot and Vauxhall design stablemates. But a more significant differentiating factor lies with the multi-jet diesel engines, which remain exclusive to this model. Here, usefully improved in more efficient multi-jet 3 form. You can see why Fiat doesn't want to share them. It's all indicative of the way that this Italian brand has clearly thought long and hard about what operators actually want. Take things like this improved model's media connectivity and autonomous driving tech, for example. As a result, if your business is in the market for a large van, then it may very well be that you really need to go for an Italian.